And very good afternoon to you. I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC News Break. The Minister of Education, Ronald Jones, is very concerned about the imbalance in the ratio of men to women taking up tertiary education. This time, he's pointing the finger at BIMAP, the Barbados Institute of Management and Productivity, urging the institution to target more men with its programs. At the same time, Minister Jones believes that young men are abandoning what he calls the transformation process. He made the appeal during BIMAP's annual graduation ceremony at the Hilton Barbados Resort. 71% of your students that are graduating or studied or whatever are females. The gap, therefore, is a 42, if I'm not be correct, 42% gap between the males and the females. What has gone wrong? I'm getting into the hallelujah now. <laughs> With our young men, that only 29%, and it is not better at the University of the West Indies either, it's about 35%. 35%. What are the men doing? The Barbados Association of Retired Persons wants the University of the West Indies to produce more graduates who will cater to the needs of older people. Executive Manager Elsa Webster says this will be one area where graduates can invest their time and resources as an aging society will have special needs. There are also business implications of, old, of the older population. Savvy students could pick up on, on the gray market or silver market, as I said before, for growth and innovation. Increasingly, we find that services and products will have to be developed specifically for older persons. And I'm talking about everything. Shoes, coffee machines, restaurant menus, kitchen aids, furniture. Ms. Webster was speaking during the presentation of the UE BARP scholarship to this year's awardee, Juliet Kamerbach. Ms. Kamerbach is pursuing a master's in social work and is writing a thesis which examines the burden placed on families who are caring for elderly relatives. The scholarship is worth $10,000. Ms. Webster says the thesis is a welcomed piece of research as the statistics continue to show that Barbadians are living longer. The national policy on aging gives some alarming statistics. Barbados has an average life expectancy of 77 years, with 13.7% of our people currently 65 years. Now I understand that that has been upgraded to 15% 15 15 of our people yeah. currently 65 years mm -hmm. and older, right, for this coming year, because that study was done about, was released in like 2013, mm -hmm. right? Um, the prediction is that by 2025, we will have 20.4% of our population. And Ms. Kamerbach explains why the area she chose for her research is so crucial. The caregiver something is going through emotional stress, social stress, financial stress, and nobody turn, turns and says, well, how are you coping? How are you doing? And most often time, and sometimes it can lead to elder abuse, most of the time it leads to elder abuse. As, as a lot of reports showed on last week in England, a guy had his mother to death because he was, the burden was so heavy. And you see it in all reports. Lives lost through tragic circumstances, including violence and road accidents, were remembered during a special service at Restoration Ministries as part of its outreach. Prayers were said and hymns sung during the Hope and Healing Service. Affected families and Attorney General and Minister of Home Affairs Adriel Brathwaite attended the service. It was held in the wake of two traffic accidents that claimed the lives of four young women along, with, along Two Mile Hill St. Michael and another involving a motorcyclist along the ABC Highway. Senior pastor at Restoration Ministries, Reverend Dr. David Durant, says families are still reeling from the effects of their loss and as part of the healing process, he suggested families be there for each other. I want out of this session here as we seek to gather together to be there as a support for these, their family members who are still feeling the effects of that loss, to form a support group so that even after this, they wouldn't be just so far away, all alone, caught up with just their feelings and their emotions without the necessary help counseling and 
all that they need to help them emotionally. The Barbados-based Institu International Institute for Cooperation in Agriculture, or ICA, is pushing for the use of high-fiber root crops in the Caribbean as part of regional food and nutrition security. ICA representative to Barbados, Ina Harvey, says root crops are not only very high in fiber, but have low glycemic content, and this is good for diabetes-based diets. And with the onset of non-communicable diseases in the Caribbean, says ICA is looking to get people to use more root crop-based foods. Ms. Harvey says other flowers like cassava, sweet potato, and breadfruit are increasingly being regarded as major weapons in the fight against diabetes and other such diseases. Guyana's Vice President Carl Greenwich says several opportunities will arise through which Barbadians can benefit as his country develops its petroleum and marine sectors. Mr. Greenwich was in Barbados on an official visit for the third session of the Barbados-Guyana Joint Commission at the Acre Beach Hotel. These are opportunities that lie, lie ahead. We need to prepare for them. We need to give thought to them and the, the technicians will pay attention to them. Again, the minister in her generosity, I, I don't think wants me to repeat all the work we've done, but just to point you in the direction that there have been very positive developments. What, is, what has been identified as things we can do, and not only those that we can do next year, but bearing in mind a, a longer term horizon. So that I'm happy to say that um, we, we will work on. The Barbados Cooperative Credit Union League is looking forward to a deposit insurance scheme being put in place in Barbados. This information from President of the League, Barry Hunt, at his annual general meeting at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center. He says they have been in touch with the Financial Services Commission about the pending legislation. The Commission had made significant progress and had indeed submitted information relative to deposit insurance to the Chief Parliamentary Council for the drafting of the necessary amendments to the relevant pieces of legislation to bring this into force. Further, the FSC has indicated that it is working assiduously to implement this deposit insurance scheme in the first quarter of 2016. Mr. Hunt says the League is continuing to hold its own financially, even though its main objective is to hold the movement together and serve the best interests of its members at all times, especially during this current economic downturn. At the level of the League, we've also achieved growth in terms of members' equity, moving from $544,000 plus to $920,000 plus. We submit that this development strengthens the league financials position and provides us with a good cushion to observe, observe any future adverse events that might impact our balance sheet. The West St. Joseph Grantley Adams Memorial School Past Students Association is celebrating its 49th anniversary with a series of activities. It began with a service yesterday at the St. John Parish Church. Association President and founding member Ulrich Seeley addressed the congregation, saying that among the planned events is a lecture. Next Sunday, we will have, I know the term, annual, we've been doing this for many years now, the annual Edward Pollock Memorial Lecture, which will be delivered by Mr. Desmond Brown, mm -hmm. a past principal of the law school. And he'll be looking at the theme, are we preparing our children for their own future? The gist of his presentation would be, how are we preparing our children today? And what are we preparing them for? And such a thing could be expected from a past principal and teacher. Well, the activities also include a visit to the Gordon Cummings District Hospital bearing gifts of food hampers. We'll take a break here, but when we come back, regional and international news. Stay with us.
Wednesday and every Friday at 10 30 a.m. It's the Eddie Street and Half Hour with yours truly. Up on 98.1 The One. I'm gonna tell you what we have in store from Eddie Supermarket, Eddie Soul Sale, Eddie's Feed Depot, Eddie's Boutique, and LC Variety. The Eddie Street and Half Hour, Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 30 a.m. on 98.1 The, the One. You're mine. U.S. federal judges have rejected Alan Stanford's appeal and has upheld his 110-year sentence. Stanford was convicted in 2012 for masterminding a Ponzi scheme.